And welcome back to The Daily Wrap. It's potluck time. This is the part of the show where we go around the table and share our favorite stories of the day. Heather Hansen, what did you bring to the party? You may have heard some time ago there was a case in California where um, some kids went to school with American flag shirts on. It was Cinco de Mayo. They were celebrating Cinco de Mayo. This is a school in California. They were sent home for wearing the American flag shirts. They then filed a lawsuit saying that their First Amendment freedom of religion rights had been violated. Okay. The court found that that was not the case, that in school you have to worry about the other students' right not to be offended is really what it came down to. And the Supreme Court this week denied appeal. So that is the law. They refused to look at it. So what it really means, and we always knew in schools there was a case in the, in the 60s called Tinker where you always knew that there was a weighing to be done about the students' freedom and of religion versus their safety and the ability to stop their beat from being fights. But when you start telling kids, I mean, can you imagine if American kids in Mexico wore um, American flags mm -hmm. to a 4th of July party or a 4th of July representation, if the, the Me what the Mexican government would do? It's just this, this idea that you can't wear an American flag in America in and of itself is absolutely reprehensible to me. And then add to that that these kids' rights, they weren't starting fights, they weren't throwing punches. All they were doing is wearing t-shirts. And the fact that that is now so offensive to other people that they can no longer do it is really, really a sad Day. What was the argument against? Was it that these kids were wearing the T-shirts to provoke? Well, that's the, that it was going to provoke, mm -hmm. Not, and maybe they were wearing it. Potentially could right. provoke. That's it. what it was because that's that's another argument that can be made, Joe, when you're when you're doing these cases. That's mm -hmm. an argument that often comes up. That you know, if you're wearing a shirt, and usually it's personal. You know, if, if my shirt says Joe's ugly, then the, we may have an issue. But if I say, you know, guys with black hair are ugly, then that may be speech. Mm -hmm. And so you really have to weigh those issues. And here, simply wearing a shirt, not throwing punches, not right. speaking in initially to right. specific people, mm -hmm. is really too much. Okay. It really is. By the way, to your Joe's ugly uh, <laughs> comment, <laughs> there actually was a band back in 1992 called Ugly Kid Joe. See that? Yeah. Were you offended? W was I offended? Yeah. No, I actually got one Were of the t-shirts. Yeah, I was a bass player. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's I, easy. Just I agree with notes. what Brad said when we were on the break about this. I'm surprised also that the Supreme Court did not take this up. They should I have. Am. Well, they, they did, and it's interesting. They also rejected the case from New York City. The schools have a ban in New York City about not allowing schools to be used to house religious services. So something is going on with the court, I think, about trying to narrowly construct Maybe. and intervene cool. in these local issues connected to schools, which I, I get. Here's what. the exception. The fact that the school didn't admit we as a school have a serious problem if allowing these kids, which I get, you can restrict because they're kids and blah, 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 but that we as a community have a very serious problem if the presence of an American flag at a Cinco de Mayo uh, celebration yeah. would be so provocative that we have to keep these kids from doing it, and maybe they did in that moment, but to have not corrected that, big problem. Absolutely. Okay. You get the final word and your first word in your potluck. Okay. Trevor Noah. Two words who we know is going to replace, you know, John Stewart, mm -hmm. who's getting in trouble for a whole variety of tweets that he has shared. I think we have some of them on screen. No, recent tweets. Let's, let's no they're, they're, they're old, and I wouldn't judge anyone by a single tweet, but they mm -hmm. include things like, Messi gets ball and real players try to foul him, but Messi doesn't go down easy, just like Jewish chicks. Oh, boy. <laughs> girls with big butts are like girls without power steering. Great feedback, but you need to work hard to keep control. Mm. Behind every rap successful rap billionaire is a double as rich Jew man. Jewish man. And finally, no, he actually wrote uh, a Jewish man. man. Originally, when, pop, uh, when men proposed, they went down on one knee. So if the woman said no, they were in perfect uppercut position. <laughs> Now, this story first broke because of concerns about his anti-Semitism. The truth is, sometimes he's funny when he does anti-Semitic things. He did one tweet, almost ran down a Jewish kid, and I would have felt bad because it was a German car. <laughs> and I did think that was kind of funny. Someone tweets back, how did you know? He tweets back because the parents looked Jewish. He has a problem, but more than a Jewish problem, he has a woman problem. Jokes about fat women, jokes about hitting women, this is a problem. And I think Comedy Central has a problem. I'm not saying he shouldn't get the job, and I respect they didn't go the easy route and just look for, you know, a, a redux of Jon Stewart. 
But this is the opposite of John Stewart, who knew how to provoke without being hateful. And this stuff is actually hateful. Yeah, there seems to be some anger with Mr. Noah that I've noticed in his tweets. I haven't seen a lot of his work on The Daily Show. Right. He, he's only done three, three appearances. Things, three things, yeah. But do you think that they're having buyer's remorse already, Heather? Well, they say that they're not. And you do have to give, you know, I don't know how old those were. They're, you know, already, years, years. already there was a, someone who was working for Jeb Bush and somebody who was working for Scott Walker who have been fired or left because of their old tweets. Mm -hmm. And this is the problem. This stuff lives with you forever. Um, whether or not he's going to be able to make up for it, you know, he says I'm an equal opportunity offender type of deal because he is from South Africa and he's biracial and he has a lot of stuff going on himself. Mm -hmm. But he's going to have some making up to do for sure. For if sure. there's a takeaway here, and it's not just for him, mm -hmm. the stuff you put out it's online, forever. it's forever. It and forever. we need an ethic of forever ideas because my ideas, you're... They're not forever ideas, most yeah. often. So be careful. <laughs> the old the old saying is that uh, there's no bad PR except for your own obituary. So <laughs> maybe this is creating some sort of weird buzz that we're, we don't know about. But uh, again, it's all about the show when it comes on in a couple months. Anyway, my potluck coming up and Rick's. This is the Daily Wrap only on Newsmax. And welcome back to The Daily Wrap. I'm your host, Joe Conchin. If you're just joining us, we're in the middle of our potluck where we're sharing our favorite stories of the day, including mine. So I want to talk to you about conversations. It's kind of wordplay-ish. Uh, so we remember the Rolling Stone debacle around the UVA rape story, right? And basically, in the end, it was a work of fiction. But we were told, and but's a very big word in today's dialogue, but at least... There's a conversation going on now about rape and a rape culture on campus. So even though the story was basically based on a complete lie, according to the Charlottesville Police Department anyway, and the Washington Post and actually credible publications, well, at least we started a conversation around <laughs> rape. <laughs> then we look at Ferguson that I brought up before. Hands up, don't shoot. Oops, that didn't happen. But at least we started a conversation around police departments and the way they handle their relationship with minorities. And yeah, there were some protests and yeah, property values have gone down in Ferguson 50% from August before the protests happened, which are, by the way, the homes owned by predominantly black people within that city. I know there were some collateral damage, but at least we're having the conversation now, <laughs> right? And then there's Ellen Poe. Did you hear about her? Is it Poe or Poe? I think it's Poe. It's Poe? Okay. So uh, she sued in Silicon Valley. Uh, her venture capital firm said there was all sorts of um, horrible things going on in terms of uh, misogyny and it's just a complete boys club and she bought it to court and everybody in the media, particularly Silicon Valley media, was rooting for her and they thought she was going to win and this was a slam dunk and every single claim was thrown out. No matter, the media still says, but she won. You know why? Because we're having a but, conversation about... But one about important distinction. Yes. She was the one who first said, well, at least we're having an important discussion now. Right. She right. did it herself. So forget the fact that she could have made know, something like millions, $160 right. million. Dollars <laughs> and, and not just one claim was thrown out. All of them were, but if you read what the final scorecard was, it was, we're but we're having a conversation yeah. about gender inequality in Silicon Valley, and I'm just sick of butts at this point. No more butts <laughs> based on lies. I'm sick of it. Get, you guys, take over. I'm, I'm exhausted. I, I like that one. I that was you. good. Yeah, I wrote about yeah. it in uh, Media that was, that's I, I And I agree with you. I think that it's, it's a rationalization, a way to feel better, because a lot of these things are harmful. They're harmful to our relationships. They're harmful to our communities, and so there's got to be some way to say, well, what's the good that comes of this? And I think the good that we grasp on is that we are having this well, conversation. Well, let's, let's have a conversation about this. My sources are telling me that as early as tomorrow, Senator Menendez, the Democrat of the state of New Jersey. You transitioned to yourself. You that like that? Great. You like <laughs> that? <laughs> you are. That's why I get the big bucks, folks. There you go. Um, Very cool. Will be indicted. He will be indicted. The, the, the key to the claims are twofold from what I'm hearing. One is has to do with his friend whose name is Dr. Solomon Melgen, who apparently overbilled Medicare for $9 million. Apparently it was a clerical error, right? $9 million. He did pay the money back, but not before Senator Menendez went to the CMS, which oversees Medicare, and tried to intervene on his behalf. Then, because that wasn't good enough for his buddy, he went to uh, the, the State Department and asked them to put pressure on the Dominican Republic because the Dominican Republic was apparently not honoring a port protection 
agreement that they had entered into with this same Dr. Melgen. So that's what's coming tomorrow. Now, for those of you who are sitting there thinking, yeah, I know what this is all about. M Menendez turned on Obama on Iran, so they're just getting payback. Not so. This was a grand jury investigation that began months, months, and months before this. And it, 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 this is not something being pursued. It's being pursued by the Justice well, Department, but it's not something being handed down by edict. It's a grand jury. And don't <laughs> discount the grand jury if you defended them in Ferguson. I'm not discounting okay. it at all. But it was signed off on by Holder a week or so after Menendez made that speech to AIPAC. Right. No, no, no. The, the, what they found was signed off on. But he would have had Holder. to have done that anyhow. Well, not yeah. necessarily, not, because uh, there, there's always deals. Rich, uh, even last Come week, on. even last week, they yeah. met with Holder. His, his representatives, Menendez representatives, met with Holder order to talk about potentially dropping this. I'm not saying but it's just political. But the grand jury had to find it before he could sign off on let it. Let me ask you a question. Do you think, given the fact that Henry, Harry Reid was involved in all of this, and he set up the meeting that uh, between Menendez and Sebelius, right. that's part of the allegations here, and he set up that meeting two months after the doctor contributed money to his super PAC. Right. Do you think that that has any impact on his decision well, here's, to retire? Here's, no, I don't, actually. Oh, oh you do? So you're you consistent. Think, mm, here's what I you think. You think that's why he's I, retiring? Seriously? I think well, we let me, let me I don't know that's why he's retired, Wait, let me answer, let multiple let things me, can be true? Let me answer a question. The reason that I don't think that's true is because there was a big distinction that they made between what Harry Reid did and what Menendez did. Harry Reid basically, whoa, 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 wait. Harry Reid answered a request from somebody in his delegation and he went with him to a meeting. That's very, very different than somebody who got a political contribution and was best friends with the guy who tried to intervene. But you've, heard, you've heard the tip of the iceberg. I, I think there may be more you'll hear about Harry Reid that may explain I, his I retirement. I seriously doubt it. I don't know if we really will, but I think both can be true. And it may be that it's both, you're right, the grand jury found what they found, but there's no question the Justice Department got hot about this immediately oh, after he went to bat for a for Oh, no, 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 go. no, that's just not <laughs> true. It's just Coming not up next, true. Yay or nay, Daily Wrap, Newsmax.